After all of your manual, latitude and longitude tendons have been created, you are then ready to perform your calculation and make the appropriate adjustments. The first step in performing your calculation is to specify your calculation options. To do that, we're going to go up to our criteria menu and then select calculation options. Here we have a variety of different pieces of information we're going to want to specify. The first option is to auto-stabilize the structure in the x and y directions. If this item is checked, RAM Concept will apply braces in the x and y global axis directions to stabilize the structure, which would not be appropriate for a model with induced horizontal loading. Next, we have an option to create viewable self-dead loading. If this item is checked, RAM concept will illustrate the self-dead loading on the self-dead loading layers. This option has no effect on the calculation, however. Next, we have an option to include supports above slab in self-dead loading. If this option is selected, RAM concept will include the weight of the supports and columns above the slabs as loads. Now, if you did model any types of supports above the slabs as dummy elements just to represent a location of a point load, you may want to ensure that this option is not selected. Next, we have an option to include tendon component in punch check reaction. If this option is selected, RAM concept will include the vertical component of the tendon force within the punch zone, which often reduces the punch check reaction. Next, we have an option to check the capacity of longitudinal user reinforcement. If this option is selected, RAM concept will perform a check on the existing user reinforcement and post-tensioning without adding any additional program reinforcement. All failed locations will be reported. Next, we need to enter our design and live load reduction categories. For these, you need to select the appropriate concrete design code and live load reduction code to be used during the calculation. Finally, we get to our zero tension iterations options, which pertain to the design of mat foundations, and also our reinforcement layout and detailing parameters, which control how RAM concept creates the reinforcement layout. For this particular model, we're going to make sure the include tendon component and punch check reaction is selected, and we're also going to select an appropriate design code and live load reduction code. Once we're done reviewing all the rest of the pieces of information through the calculation options, we can click OK. Now at this point, we're ready to perform the full calculation. This can be done either through the process menu or by using the Calc All icon on your standard toolbar. Before performing the full calculation, the program may ask you if you'd like to regenerate the finite element mesh. Here we will go ahead and click Generate Mesh with an element size of 3 feet. Immediately following that, the calculation will start to be performed. Now you may get a few analysis warnings, and we're going to walk our way through some of the more common calculation warnings that you may encounter. First, we have an error has occurred while trying to calculate the tendon profile. And we're also getting some tendon has a radius less than the minimum allowable type of warning. We're getting a warning where a different configuration in one design spans from an adjacent span. And we're getting a non-external tendon is out of the cross section. We're going to go ahead and walk our way through each of those different warnings as we rectify them and wait for our next analysis opportunity. After your calculation is performed, if you do receive any warnings, they will be appearing on the right-hand side of your screen. If you want to get a closer look at each warning, you can just double-click on the option. and It'll highlight the tendon that created the warning. We will now walk our way through each of these warnings and adjusting the model as necessary before we achieve our model for our final calculation. The first type of warning we're getting is that a tendon is located outside of the slab. This warning is generated for each of the latitude and longitude tendons that run between the main slab and the slab depressions. 
The profile points at these locations may need to be adjusted to ensure that they are within the slab, and they can also be affected by your slab trimming. On our latitude manual tendon layer, we're going to hold down our shift key and select all of the tendons that run between the slab depression and the main slab along grid lines 3 and 7. We're going to right click and say selection properties. And if we increase the elevation value at end 1, it'll push it down to ensure that now our tendons will be within the slab. We'll go ahead and set this to 3.25 inches and click OK. And then we're going to do the same process for the tendons that run between the main slab and the slab depression for the longitude tendon plan. And these will occur right adjacent to grid intersection B2 and B8. I'm going to right click and say selection properties. And again, I'm going to push down the elevation at value at end 1. The next set of warnings we have are in regards with the tendon radius, saying that it is less than the minimum allowable. Now this warning has been generated for each of the longitudinal tendons along grid lines 4, 5, and 6 between grid lines A and B, so in this location right here. Now the profile points at these locations should be adjusted to avoid the minimum tendon radius warning, or alternatively you could also adjust the default material property to allow for a smaller radius. For this model, we're going to go ahead and adjust the profile points. With my selection cursor, I'm now going to draw a fence around all of the points along grid line B. I'm going to right click and say Selection Properties. And I'm going to adjust the value at end 1 to be 5.25 inches. Next, I'm going to draw a fence around the single tendons that run between those. Again, I'm going to right click and say Selection Properties. And I'm going to adjust the elevation at end 2 to 5.25 inches. Now, I have one more type of warning that was generating, saying that I have a conflicted, has a different configuration than the previous section of the same span. So basically, I have two design strips at right adjacent to each other within the same span that have different properties. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, that is happening in the latitude, latitude direction. So I'll go to my layers, design strip, and we'll go to latitude design spans plan. And I can see here that for the pore strip area, I've identified the properties for these design strips to be different than the adjacent segment. The reason for that is because all of the segments in this plan have been defined as post-tensioning except for the ones within the design strip. These are going to be designed as traditional reinforced. That being said, even though a warning was generated, because of this configuration, we have reviewed it and realized that this is an acceptable consideration for our slab and that this was actually done intentionally. So we're going to go ahead and ignore that type of warning. After you make all the necessary changes to your tendon geometry, you're ready to reperform the full calculation where you'll have an opportunity to, to review the design warnings and to be sure that you've addressed all of the necessary concerns. Up in the standard toolbar, we'll now click on the Calc All icon to reperform the calculation. Now, anytime you make any significant changes to the geometry or loading of the model, RAM Concept will ask you to regenerate your finite element mesh. Now, during the calculation, we do receive one analysis warning, which indicates that a certain design strip will have a different configuration than the previous segment in the same span. Now we have already reviewed these warnings and we realized that our design strip geometry or properties were specified intentionally. So we can go ahead and skip through that type of warning for this exercise. And you can see that the rest of the tendons indicating that a tendon is out of the slab or is violating the minimum radius requirements have now gone away. We can also review this information and we could hide these warnings if we're all set with that.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.